carpals, and the carpals is Greek for wrist, and that's the wrist bones that are right there, two rows of eight bones, and those eight bones, if we then put an imaginary line through, are four proximal a row of four proximal carpal bones and a row of four distal carpal bones. And there are the first letters of each of them. And you might be saying, hey, how do you remember all the carpal bones and in order? Well, I remember them through a simple mnemonic. Sally left the party to take Kathy home. I went to a religious university, so I don't, didn't learn all those other more uh, colorful mnemonics that people use. So let's do that again, shall we? So let's take this S and say, what is S? It's that bone right there. And S is for scaphoid bone, which is Greek for boat. Because if you look at it, it kind of looks like a boat. Scaphoid bone, it makes a big articulation with the uh, distal end of the radius. And it also has a very unique blood supply to watch out for avascular necrosis if it's fractured. And then we have this other bone right here, and that is the L for lunate. And lunate is Latin for moon, because if we take a look at the lunate bone and blow it up, it kind of looks like a half moon. Then we have the next uh, bone, which is a T, and T stands for triquetrum. Tri for three, quatrum. Oh my heavens, I can't even pronounce it. It's Latin for three corners, because it articulates with three bones, the hamate, the lunate, and the pisiform bone. Next, we have P, that one right there, which is pisiform, which is Latin for P-shaped because it looks like a green P. This is a, sethmoid, a sesamoid bone. It's the last of the eight carpal bones to uh, form, and it's sesamoid because it's really in the tendon of the uh, flexor carpal ulnaris. It's the only bone that, it's the only carpal bone it articulates with is a triquetrum, uh, right, that's on. Next T is for this bone right here, which is the trapezium. And I remember it because the trapezium articulates with the thumb. Thumb trapezium. And right beside it is this other bone that has the exact same derivation, which is trapezoid, which is Latin for table. So trapezium and trapezoid both have this Latin derivation dealing with table. Evidently, it looks like a table, like you could play poker on it. All right, this next one, the letter C, is this bone right here. It gets C for capitate because capitate is Latin for head. And there we have the capitate bone. You look at it, yeah, it kind of looks like a head. The next bone we're going to talk about is this one right here, and that is the hamate, which is Latin for hook, because that little structure there is called the hamulus, or hook, of the hamate. So we look at this palmar surface where the hand is face up, and there is that hook, whereas the x-ray is the back surface of the hand face down, where it looks kind of like this. There the asterisk is showing the uh, hamate the hamulus of the hamate, and watch. You look at the back surface, and there it is in the asterisk. And so if you then toggle from the palm surface of the hand forward or the back surface is the hand touching the table or the back of the hand touching the table, you get an idea of where the uh, hamulus of the hamate is on x-ray. All right, so there we now have a group of bones that are called the metacarpals. And there they are on the back of the hand here. And the prefix meta means after or beyond the carpals. These are the bones, the metacarpals are the bones after the wrist. And there are five of them. One on the thumb is makes one, two, three, four, five. And so there are those five carpal bones. They're the bones you see in the palm of the hand. And there is the head of a metacarpal, which is distal, forming the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And then the base is the one that articulates with the carpal bones. Next, we have these bones here, and these are the phalanges. And the phalanges are numbered one for thumb, two for index finger, three for swear finger, four for ring finger, and five for pinky. And so there on the thumb is a proximal and a distal uh, phalange. And then you have a proximal, middle, and distal part of the digits in the digits two through five. All right, so let's do some joints. So there between the radius and the carpal, specifically the scaphoid and the lunate, is the radiocarpal joint. It's a synovial joint. And then over here between the ulna and then really the triquetrum and part of the lunate, there is a structure called the TFCC, the triangular triangular fibrocartilaginous complex, and it's a cushion uh, support between the ulna bone and this proximal row of carpal, specifically lunate and triquetrum. Next joint is there, and this is between the carpals and the metacarpals. It's called the carpometacarpal joint, all on that uh, 
gray area. Then we also have this joint between the metacarpals and the phalanges, which is the metacarpal phalangeal joint, MCP joint. Then we have this next uh, joint between the proximal and middle phalange that they call it the proximal interphalangeal joint. And then there's another joint between phalanges and it's called the distal interphalangeal joint. And pretty much all in medicine, they just call them the DIP, PIP, 